All right, Don, what are we doing today? Okay, today we're gonna go through the process of an installing a set of carriage doors. And here we are on location in Seattle with a customer and they just received their crate of carriage doors, which is pretty typical. Usually they get delivered on the curb and someone was here to get it pushed into the building. So today we're gonna put in a double set. So we're gonna go through all the different phases as kind of a guide. With this set of carriage doors, we're getting um, the setup. They're pre-hung in the shop, in other words. They're all put together, the hinges and everything are cut. So here you can see, um, here we've got the jams, and here we're ready to put the hinges in. This is ready for the kerf weather stripping that will go into here. And so in a sense, it's all ready. The top, the two sides, these are the legs and this is the top and so basically we get the hinges put on put the kerf in and then we can screw it together and then we have in this case which is pretty normal is the threshold in which case that could be attached to the jam or it can be put in later um, and that'll go on the floor and here we have the astrical which will cover the joint between the two carriage doors that will provide weather stripping at the center of the door. And then we have, you know, packs of screws for putting things together um, that is needed. And we have some weather stripping wedges for down in the corner that, uh, which is always a weakness in weather stripping where the weather stripping ends and beyond the bottom of the door. Okay, with carriage doors, we're gonna typically, we're in this case, we're using uh, butt hinges, but for a large size door, we often go with a heavy duty hinge, in which case we almost always are using ball bearing hinges, but when we're doing a large door, this is a heavy duty ball bearing hinge. Now we have standard ones and we have nerfed ones. The reason we use a nerfed hinge um, and what it has is a, uh, security uh, little screw put in there and it helps secure the pin um, so that it can't be removed and the reason we don't want it removed obviously the hinges are exposed the pins are exposed because mm -hmm. a typical carriage door is an outswing um, it's an outswing door in which the pins are all available so we've got to put a couple of nerfed hinges somewhere in here because for here, you took this pin out, this one would be nerfed or some combination so that you couldn't just pop the pins and then pull the door up. This is a really nice, pretty traditional Craftsman carriage door made in Sapili mahogany. As we build it, this has a full mortise in here, um, similar to how you would frame, frame a timber frame building which is the tradition that I come from. So we have a full mortise and tenon. Most doors are not made that way. They're made with just joinery that, that matches with right here or very shallow joinery. And that is fine maybe in a man door. But once I get into a large size door, I want a lot of structural strength. These you don't want to over tighten them mm. or they'll snap off with the brass bronze base. As you're putting your jam together, there you can make some decisions. And for those that want a complete four sided frame to go up into the hole um, that would mean attaching the threshold to the bottom of the legs and which is an option you really what you really want to do at this point you want to think in terms of where your threshold this is where the door would go so this on an outswing this is your 
farthest out point and you're typically going to want the flat part to go and and contain the door so the bottom of the door is coming here and so you're going to want to position your sill here if you're jammed this is a little bit wider jam but on a maybe on a more typical jam you you could cut a half an inch off the bottom just down to this level and that way you could run screws and screw this into the bottom of the jam you would have all four sides of the frame going up um, into the opening and so we're gonna cut that and show what that would be like that's certainly one option the other option is simply to hang the doors with three the three components the legs which would be loose and you've got to work them to be plumb and level and then you can cut and lay the threshold in at the end of at the end of the hang um, but certainly that's a choice you could pre-attach it in which case we could notch this down to this level screw it into the back end of the jam and then in a, in a way that's easier for certain situations and certainly is the choice of who's putting the, the frame together Okay, here we're gonna kinda talk about and show you how to use. We're gonna talk about the adjustable, special adjustable threshold that we include on this door and just about every door we do. Um, and we're gonna talk about that. Now we've got our hinges in place and here you can see the cap on the end that hides it. And we're gonna show how it's adjusted. This slips in here, and then here we are sliding it out. This is an adjustable sweep. We get this from Switzerland, and it's really high quality silicone. These little slides here fit into a channel here. So if we want this to stick down farther, then we unscrew slightly and then that will extend the distance so when we slide this back in the channel this will stick down farther if we want less then we just twist this so that it's tighter and then it won't stick down as far it'll come back this weather stripping is meant to go from basically no clearance between the door and the threshold to three eighths of an inch. And so we plan on a quarter of an inch between the bottom of the door and the threshold. And that's true whether we're doing a standard entry door or we're doing a carriage door. We want to aim for a quarter of an inch. This will come out all the way so that anytime you want to adjust, you pull the cap, you pull this out and adjust it, and then you slide it, slide it back in, get your guide into the channel, make sure it's in there, and then slide it in. There'll be several of those um, along the way that will keep it together. And then we basically cover it up by pushing back in. There we have it. Okay, now Jim and Sam have set some <clears throat> spacers based on, on the opening, but one key point when I'm hanging a door, particularly something large like that, I want control of the header. So they put a block up here, in which case the first thing I do once I get a door with, with two legs and it's relatively loose, the legs are, I put shims in right at the top header because I want to get it firmly in place because it becomes kind of my base to work from as I adjust the legs back and forth. So 
Now we're going to move forward, and Jim and Sam will go ahead and get the the, the jam up into position. There is a case where, let's say you got to adjust it, you're going to have to put another hole in there. This is just to keep the doors from falling off, you know. Putting masking tape down here and up here, and the idea is to measure to the center point. That way, we can kind of adjust this door without putting the other door in place. And that just saves us a lot of time. And as you noticed, when we're just initially putting this up, you know, they got the airbags and ways to hold the, the door in place. Here we have a nice long least three inch screw that we want to use in these back holes but at the time being we have a nice secure strong jam um, yeah thanks Jim this is what we're using inch and a quarter so this is what we use up front to get everything secure and then we want to use long screws and particularly our top hinges often we use the European style and we put weight our hinges at the near the top of the door and the reason for that is it is the top of the door that is working the hardest because gravity wants to pull it off the top so if we load up our hinges up high we get a lot more work done and a lot more carrying capacity and basically the bottom hinge is basically pushing the bottom of the door away from but gravity the door wants to do this so um, but that's a big reason why we're using such long screws. Okay, this is a problem that we're having. It's not a big problem, but it's a problem that's really common. And so we want to do this as an illustration so that we're explaining how it can be fixed out in the field. So we have the doors hung 
we're good along the top. They're even. The gap is good all the way down. However, at the bottom, you can see that this door come with the top all the way in. This door wants to be out a little bit from this door. We're going to solve that. This door out here at the jam, we're going to we're going to bring this out ever so slightly. With that, we can take the top in the, on the jam and press it in slightly. And then, obviously, since this door is out, we want to come over here and tap this door in and this out. Now, what's interesting about that, this works even with an entry door or a single door, but with a double door, we have four corners. So basically, I take whatever this dimension is. In this case, it's half an inch. So that means I can divide that by four. So I can move that out an eighth, that in an eighth, this, this out an eighth, and this in an eighth, and I've solved it without doing any more work. And, and then I've got a perfect setup, which is ideal. cigar yet. Much better. Perfect. Hey, you guys need the old man around every once in a while. We do. I want to talk about how we handle protect the center. And we use an astral. And there's a couple rules and ways that we deal with this. This is a manual set. So this is going to be fixed, the hit active door. And this is the active door. And since it's a manual setup, this will have cane bolts and this will close, much like many front doors that are double. So what we do, to protect the lock so that someone can't easily pick it with a credit card or something else, we'll put an astrical on it and we'll put it on here and that protects the joint, not only for security reasons, but for weather. We've weather stripped it because this is weather this is a standard, typical curved weather strip. And we put this edge at the edge of the door so that we are getting weather protection. This needs to stick out a little bit like this. And then it'll cush up against the fixed door. Now, we'll do this on an automatic swinging garage door. The only thing differently is... We'll put this on the door that comes in last. And then on the inside of the opposite door, we'll put a non-weather strip astral like this. And what happens is we end up sandwiching the doors slabs together at the center. Because the problem with any double door is the most vulnerable loose part is at the bottom center. So if we put astragals on both sides, particularly on our automatic door, then we discipline, we pull the doors together at the bottom. 
on a door that's manual like this, this door will have a cane bolt, so it'll be already in a fixed position. So in that case, th a case like this one here, all we need is this piece here. You know, that edge goes to this edge. Yes, one thing that we've seen when we've been in the field, when there's been uh, some confusion, is we would find this whole thing put back here. And we want it placed like this so that the the weather stripping is out and actually over and touching the other door and that's um important detail that makes it work like it's it's pretty simple so we'll pre-drill it or you'll pre-drill it and put screws in to to connect it to here um that's masterful Ha, ha, ha.